。嗨，大家，这一场演讲是由英伟英伟正。呃，从来自马来西亚为我们带来的 Python and C c o u r s e 那呃，因为郑他同时也是今年 Python 马来西亚的主席。呃、uh, ，this this talk is 呃、uh, Python and C c o u r s e from 因为郑 from 马来西亚。He's also the chair of the Python 马来西亚呃 this year.、Uh, let's welcome. Thank you, the host, for the、uh, introductions. And my topic today will be on Python and SQL, and of course, one thing that I would like to share to you is about how I actually created a universal SQL client. So, a little bit about the agenda that we have today. So, basically, is a storytelling that I'm going to tell you how I embark on this project, namely, what is the motivation, how I actually design it, what has to do with what is mentioned over there, PEP two four nine. And as well as what are the features that I have included into my SQL client, and together I hope I can have some time to demo because to me this is really an awesome tool that I would like to share with you. And apart from that, I would like to invite you for pull request if you can because I still have some problems that yet to be solved. So who am I? As the host has mentioned, I'm the chair for PyCon Malaysia this year, and also the co-chair for PyCon Malaysia 2018. And daily job, I'm an automation engineer, as well as during nighttime, I'm a babysitter. Okay, so the only time that I'll do my coding either is in the early in the morning, or whenever I have a Eureka time, I'll do it at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And that is the time、uh, I have my kids watching TV. So their favorite shows right now, one is Paw Patrol, and the other one is Teen Titan Go. So if you happens to be the father, probably you know that. Okay. So, what makes me actually go for this project? Now, one reason that I found out that for most of the DBMS, for example, MS SQL, MySQL, Postgres, as well as SQLite, they have different set of com command prompt. For example, for MySQL, all of us are very、uh, familiar with MySQL client, and not to mention that for Postgres we have PSQL. And together with SQLite three, we have SQLite three. At the same time, when you try to query for a table, you face another set of issue again, where all of them will have different set of commands for the tables. And of course, for for my case, I find that this is quite notorious because for every set of the SQL clients, I have to remember all the commands. For example, for Postgres, I know I need to know that dash. TL is for me to search for the tables, while for MySQL I have to do a show table, and not to mention that MySQL show select blah 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 blah. Okay, so this gives me an idea. If this is such a notorious thing, can I actually build something that is universal and I don't need to remember the command? Of course, you might say that. Well. James, why do you want to build that? There's plenty of software down on the road where you actually can do the same thing as you mentioned, but yet we haven't really solved that problem, especially for command lines. We still need to do the same, different kinds of command on that. So I begin to think about this: Can we actually build something to that? Well, throughout my search for the GitHub. I find that some someone actually has the same problem as I do, and the first commit was actually one year ago. But the way that he built, he actually、uh, included most of the thing. However, for my project, mine is kind of independent from him, meaning that I I didn't do a fork to the projects. I do it on myself. Okay, I didn't know that until recently. I've been searching for it. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is how I got to know this、uh, rebel a、uh, few months back before that, and to and there's one thing that is particular that I'd like to mention about the my first commit date. It was the date that where Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram down globally. I'm not too sure whether you still remember that. Okay, and of course, it was not a coincidence for me to start with this project. So throughout three years,、uh, I actually have different experience with SQL client. 
The first one will be SQLite, where actually I'm thinking of building a remote SQL client for SQLite. Reason for that is I find that it's interesting that no one actually think of building a remote client for SQLite. Okay, so I decided to do one. Uh, the effect wasn't very good because I just when when I finished building that, I just realized that SQLite was, is a single traded DB. So it is not quite successful when I build, particularly if we want to build a multi-traded SQLite client. Perhaps what we have for today, which I just thought about that, maybe we can solve these problems with async IO by today. And of course, throughout the another uh, years, 2017, 2018, and 2019, I have different experience with Postgres, MySQL, and as well as right now, currently we, in my company, we use a lot of uh, MS SQL, and that's how I get to have experience with all these different kinds of the SQL client. So if this is the case, that I would like to build a universal SQL client, what are the requirements that I need to know? So first thing, of course, being here, and I'm, I like Python, so the first requirement is I need to build this in Python. That's the first requirement. Second thing, it must be lightweight, meaning that the, foot, the memory footprint has to be small, and it, it is also small enough that I can put into embedded systems such as maybe Cisco routers, particularly, or any kinds of firewalls that allows me to do that, or an, any system as long as it has Python installed it. Of course, one of my goal is I hope that I can put it into uh, MicroPython as well. Second, uh, third thing is that it has to be dynamic and customizable. And this is going to be the highlight of the client that I wrote. It has a simple set of commands. That's also the goal, as well as it can be included or installed on any OS, which of course includes OpenBSD. And why I mentioned OpenBSD over that? Because I love OpenBSD, that's one thing. And of course, it has to be a command prompt. Because again, I love command prompts. Now, here comes the core philosophy as a conclusion from the requirements. So the core philosophy of what I need to have for building this stuff, it has to be define what you need. You can't just put everything into the client because it has to be a lightweight client. And of course, this leads to another one, use what you need. Because sometimes when, you download, when we download a client, we didn't really know what we need. So we just download it, and this tool over here forces us to think on what we need before we actually build the tools. And of course, the reason of it is it has to be lightweight and customizable. So throughout my experience in writing SQL client, I found out there's a uh, bullet plate, um, boilerplate code that actually you can use to write most of the SQL, uh, SQL client code on Python. First thing, you start with the con and define the DBMS client. Then we start with the cursor, and from the cursor, you do the execute. So I begin to think about that. Is there any way that we can make this code dynamic? The answer is that, yes we can actually load the library dynamically. Meaning that in this case, in, uh, in a usual way that we do, is we do import time, for example. And you do time, dot time, and you get the epo time. But from this code over here, what you can do is, you can do import, import libraries, and you do my DBS module, and you import the name of the library in terms of the string. So that solved my first problems over there. But wait, are all the clients who have the same method that we mentioned over there, particularly on the slides over here, are all of them obey this? Is there any standard documentations that allows us to refer so that we know all the clients who have the same method? So I begin to do Google. And here comes the PEP 249. So what is mentioned over in PEP 249, it mentions that it actually encourage all the SQL clients or all the DBMS system 
to have the same set of API so that we save our time to query for the API. We don't need to remember different kinds of API for different kinds of the uh, DBM, DBMS module. So we don't need to do that. So meaning that in this case, with this documentation, it actually allows me to standardize my client. Because I know that for constructors, it will always be DBMS module.connect with the insert parameters. And of course, the methods for the connection will be cursor, commit, rollback, and close. And as well as the methods for the cursor will be execute, execute many, and fetch one, fetch all. So these are what I can do. So if this is a case, if this is a case that we can safely say that all the DBMS modules follow the same set of methods and the constructors, okay? Which means we can actually write the bullet plate codes easily based on what we know from PEP 249. So right now, let's see. If this is a case, if this is a case, that means we can actually we can actually do something that is much more simpler than what we need to do. So we can borrow the idea, firstly, from the import libraries, put the names of the DBMS, and start to write our SQL queries easily without worrying what SQL clients that we need to handle. Okay, So this is the idea that I would like to have. And this is why I mentioned that PEP 249 has turned out to be a very important document that helps me to design the thing. So first thing, how actually do I design the SQL client? Now, the first version of a SQL client is kind of cranky, I'll say, because I didn't know how to do a design on the command prompt. So what I do actually is simple enough as what we start to learn or we start something simple. So I'll just leave myself to put if the inputs of the command equals to blah, 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 then it displays something. But there's an issue for this set of the code over here. So what actually is the issue over here? Anyone want to have a guess? What would be the issues over here with this set of code if you want to run it on command prompt? Audience? Okay, now the issue with this code over there is it solos violates our requirements, which it is not customizable. So imagine that, let's say you want a new command. Say you want to find columns of the table. You put columns, blah, blah, blah. Then you have no choice but to go to this file to add in a branch for the elf is. No, uh, elf if. Input commands it took, uh, e uh, equals to columns, blah, 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 then it will show you. But this violates what will actually mean for our requirements because what our requirements mention over there is we have to build this dynamically, meaning that the users actually can add the commands easily by themselves. So if this is the case, how are we going to solve this? Okay, how are we going to solve this? So to my surprise, and this actually makes me to have a sleepless night, okay? So I decided to do a Google. And what is mentioned on the Mandarin up there, it means that when you are out of ideas, you start to seek for God. And our big God over there is Google. So I start to Google, and these are the page that returns to me. It's a documentation on the Python of uh, PSF called uh, cmd.py. Now, in this document, it actually helped us to build a command prompt easily, okay? So if you are interested, you can actually uh, look at this documentation. It is very interesting, and this is how I got the idea. So as I read through along, these are my response, okay? So I'm not going to say that word, but I know, uh, I know you guys what it means. It means that when you do a code review, I, I, I think you guys have seen this comic before, where there's a two distinct uh, distinct of the rooms where one rooms will have all the F words coming out and the other rooms will have the rooms with one or two F words coming out. 
So it means that the quality of the code is inversely proportional to the effort that you receive during the code review. Okay. So as I read through along, I really was fascinated, and that was the moment that I have a sleepless night after I have read to, I have been doing this project. So in this documentation, there's one concept that he actually introduced. And these are the set of the standard methods that we actually, or perhaps most of us, have not had experience with. So if you look at the code itself, you find that there's one line that worth our attention, which is on, uh, uh, under the line try, fun, dot, uh, fun equals to get attribute. Okay, that was the line that was that. It means that, what does, uh, I mean, uh, what does this line of code mean? It means that when we, we can actually add the methods dynamically into the object easily. Okay, so it means, again, let me just try to say this again. It means that we can add, no, sorry, we can get the attribute uh, provider is defined in the method easily without going through writing the standard start. So I begin to go do another round of Google. I find that there's actually a standard library which more than that, which we have get attribute, set attribute, and has attribute. How many of you have heard of this actually? Okay, not many hands, we have few. But do you know how to use that? I, I, I think so. Maybe, yeah, I don't know, okay? And to me, this is something new, okay? This is something new. I just found out recently when I embarked on this project. So if we have these standard libraries, how can we refactor our code? So if this is the case, then I begin to restructure my code such that I can separate the code easily in, in the case that I'll have one script or one file that responsible for the interface, one file that were responsible for the command prompt, and another uh, file that responsible for getting the data or fetching the data from DBMS. And initially, I think I, I'll call it as MVC, but after I check, I, I find that it's more like a MVP models, okay? So the next thing is the refactoring. And this is only part of the codes, and if you like to have a look at the historical code, probably you can refer to the branch SHA over there on top, okay, so if you are interested. So from there, when I borrow the idea, I can write a class and use the same concept, which if you notice that this is, the first one will be the model, which allows me to fetch the data easily, okay, and this is one thing that how I write a method to uh, method to uh, to get the columns of the table, okay? And as well as this is the control interface, meaning that I can actually use the same way, which is a set attribute and get attribute and has attribute to run the command. So for example, the snippet of a code over there is what I'll do is when I run the command called Falcon, and as you know, this is a Falcon web uh, framework, it allows me to run a uh, Falcon web app, okay, and it runs dynamically. And not to mention that control interface is an interface that allows me to do a SQL query. And this is a simple initial interface that I write it so I can break them easily. Okay, a little bit running out of time, but I would like to show you. A, now, features of my SQL clients, finally. Okay, so what are the features that I have for my SQL client over there? When you do shows table, you don't need to remember all different kinds of the commands again. What you need to do is you just need to type in table and you know what is the table for that DB. And of course, you can do columns and if you want to find out what is your previous command, because sometimes when you deal with command prompts, SQL queries can be very lengthy. So it helps with that. And of course, execute previous command, save files, funky mode, mm, okay, I'll show you later, web app, Falcom and the last one will be the highlight for this, okay? Now, let's do a little bit of demo from that, okay? I have the thing running by now. Okay, okay how do I make this uh, big? Okay, never mind.
Is it big enough? Too small? Mm. Is it good enough? Okay, fine, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to write this thing. Okay, I'm going to run my SQL, and I have a radius server running in the back. So if you can't see from the back, uh, I'll encourage you to come to the front. Okay, so right now this is a prompt that I enter into my SQL client. Okay, and first thing that I'd like to do is I can actually do a help. It helps me all the commands that I have. And if I want to look for the table, here are the tables that I have inside my, my SQL right now. Okay, I didn't need to do anything. And for the, demo, for the sake of demo right now, I have uh, set one thing, which is colon. And previously, this laptop was a demo laptop for my radius server. So I can do colon. If I want to find the colon for one of my table, I have one table called red account. Yes, so these are the data that you can see. These are the columns that I have within it. I wonder how I can make this bigger. Ah, great. Okay. Okay, so let me just demo it again. If I want to find column, red account. Yep. These are the attributes for the column. So right now, I begin to look for my data. I'll just search it easily. Here's my data for the SQL client. So do I need to remember anything? No. And one thing about this is, if I'm not happy, if I want to query for another database, let's say SQLite, what I can do over there is I do a switch, SQLite 3, and I have a database over there which is preloaded SQL uh, CT line. Okay? And to show that this is true, I'm going to show you a table. And right now, it's a SQLite table. So this is one thing. And of course, uh, we can also quick. When you type quick, you're back to the original table. And not to, uh, to show you again. Here you go. Okay. Meaning that you can switch between the client, uh, the client or the D uh, different DBMS module easily. And since we have typed the command, we can actually type R, and we can show the command. And of course, T is can execute the command. And of course, sometimes working in the company, the boss wants you to load this into an Excel file. So it is also very easy for us to do that. So we just need to do it. Save, result. OK, I'll call it PyCon. Uh, PyCon tw.csv, boom, it's safe, okay? And to show that this is true, uh, let me just find it. So, okay, so this is where, okay, so if you see that CSV file, See the result here. Here you go. So you can save the thing easily. And as I mentioned, I'd like to show you the highlight of this, which I have really defined in my definition, DB definition. Oh no, command definition. And this set of command, uh, command definition is a command that I define dynamically. Okay, so meaning that for this, when I type in this command called ct, it returns me as a query for this. Oops. Ah, okay. So if I type in ct, 
it allows me to give me a SQL query of this. So I'll begin to back to my command prompt again. So I'll switch SQLite 3 CT line. Okay, so what I need to do is I just type in CT. Boom. Okay, I just need one command which I define on the command definition JSON. Okay, simple as that. So meaning that you can actually define whatever commands that you think it helps you to run the queries easily. Now, of course, this is not enough. Okay, I'm quite excited about it because this tool, when I created it, I feel so excited about it because this is so cool. So one thing, I can also type in Falcon and it loads the app right now. So I have some preloaded app uh, page. Let me try to load that. Okay, I think this is the one. Is it possible to see? No. Okay, now this is a web app that comes with it with the command line when you type Falcon. So again, we'll do the same thing. Boom. If you feel like command prompts is a pen for you to look at, you have a web interface. Okay, and these are the things that you'll never get a chance to find it on the any kind of the command prompt. It doesn't come with the web. It comes with, for my project on that is, it comes with a web easily. And of course, again, I would like to show you another thing. Okay, and right now, this is more like an experimental thing, which I, I just found out there's a bug this morning when I tried it, but it's still worth attention. Okay, so this is a visualization code, and I have a demo over there which is the same. Uh, ah, Python demo. Okay. So let's just put it there. So this is a SQL query. And what does this do over that is it will show you a visualization. Boom. And I believe that you never get this thing on any set of a command prompt. Okay? So here comes my end of my demo. And of course, uh, I do encourage you to for the pull request because I do have problems that yet to be solved, which I would like to build a EI di uh, ER diagrams on that. And of course, I would like to have another eyes for the refactoring because I still feel that the code is not quite complete yet. Okay? So any questions? Any questions? Any questions from the ground? Yep. Uh, Slido, any host? Yeah, I know, just one minute. Any questions from the Slido or any? Yes, questions. Not yet. Thanks for the suggestion. Thank you. Not yet. But uh, in the in the process of that, question down the floor. Uh, I'm not. I do not prefer slider because you know. Yeah. Questions from the ground. Any questions? Yes. Your suggestion is the same as the suggestion that I got from PyCon Malaysia as well. When I do a demo, yeah. So it will be a future roadmap. Any question from the ground? Any more questions? Uh, uh, you can also uh, speak in Mandarin. I do understand Mandarin. Uh, uh, can you use uh, Sorry about that. I, I want to ask another question sure, about the ahead. Kerberos. Have you, uh, I'm just wondering, have you considered how to deal with the Kerberos? Authentication, because 
uh, because there's uh, if we are doing in the production in some uh, company's environment, there has covers security control. Uh, okay, so if you look at this thing, I only allows 127.0.0.1. Okay. So that means that you will not be able to access it from the web. Okay. Because this is something for, for us to use as a personal. I mean, you can also use it in a corporate, provided that this web client over there is mm -hmm. not accessible by others. Okay. There's no way that others can access that because I put a rules over there or this only restrict to 127.0.0.1. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. One last question, maybe. How? Okay, pull requests. Def uh, definitely encourage. Okay, I would like to uh, have this uh, work together. Thank you very much.